Welcome to the World Karate Federation's The Decade's Best, Series 2, Chapter 6, and revisiting the 2012 Senior World Championships in Paris, France. Today's programme features the male team Kata Final between Japan and Italy. And to help me explain what's going on and to ask some really interesting questions, hopefully we have two fantastic karateka. First of all, Nan Nguyen the former World Kata Champion from Vietnam. And also joining us is one of the world's top referees, the Secretary of the World Karate Federation Referee Commission, Robert Hamara from Norway. Hello, Hello. both of you. And Hello, welcome Billy. to the... Hello. Program. Welcome, and Nan. So just before we get into the competition and to, and to get your views, there are, we're looking at two of the best uh, team male team kata uh, exponents in the world Japan and Italy over a 20 year period it was pretty much Japan and Italy between 86 and 2006 and we had Italy going into this as the former world champions and Japan changing their team and style from uh, Shitaru to Shotokan so uh, Robert there's been lots of changes in rules over those years and can you give us an idea really of what those changes mean and how they've affected the role of the kata judge. Uh, yes, Philip, we have a changes to the rules. We have a changes to the referee setup or the judges setup for the judgment. And uh, this is a huge change. As we are going to see in a few seconds or few minutes, the, the competition from the Bercy uh, Hall in Paris, uh, you can see that we used the time five judges with the flags, the voted by flags, and the result of the match was uh, prevailed by the by the judges uh, voting in majority. Today, the system is changed completely as a setup of judges. That means we have a we use seven judges or five judges depends on the competition, and um, they are sitting in one line, and they vote by uh, electronic system. Uh, we have uh, tablets. Uh, they have to give the numbers. That means that the scoring is prevailing the winner of the competition. Uh, okay. So, so what, yes. what, what I'd like to do is to, uh, we're going to get into that action now, Robert, and to see exactly what was going on back in 2012. And then we'll get another chance to come back to the, the, that fundamental change between the flag system and the point scoring system. And I'd like to, at some point then, get a view from Nan as a former world champion and also as a coach. So here we go. We have Japan coming out in red colors. A different team, Aramato, Soma and Sugunio. Uh, they are going to perform the kata ansu from the Shotokan system. And Italy, again, we see the wonderful Luca Valvesi, Mourinho and Coguccio. Uh, that's the same team that took the world title in 2010. So we have two Shotokan kata being performed here. And of course, it's as tradition, red will go first and blue will follow after, after that. So as we get into this, I mean, uh, I mentioned the, the fundamental change, Robert, from the flags to the point scoring system. Uh, if you can give us a, an idea of the, that, that point scoring system and, and particularly how it might have influenced the understanding, particularly for the audience, uh, and also for the competitors and the referees. So, um, if you can see, we have the five judges here, the vote by flags. So, um, for the public, was just information, okay, the um, majority voted for this or that team. But um, today, we have the judges voting by scoring. That means they give the points. And they give the points in two categories. The one is uh, uh, technical performance and another one is athletic performance. So the judges have to give the scoring in the particular uh, uh, scoring category. And then the system calculates this and gives the, uh, the result. And the competitor or team with the higher number of points is a winner. So this is a difference and this is giving the public possibility to see the difference in the level of the competitors or teams. But just to mention one thing, uh, those teams we are uh, watching right now, the top level of the of the world. So the difference between them sh we wouldn't be uh, much than a few points, few uh, pieces of points. 
Well, that, that's, a, that's a very important uh, observation, isn't it, about that, those tight margins, because when you have yes. the flag systems, you could have five flags to red or five flags to blue, and the impression is that it's a walkover. But that certainly isn't the case with the point system, is it? And the judges would have had these, these teams very, very close indeed. But now, I guess, the chance for the audience and for the coaches, etc., to see exactly what those margins are with the points is really there. And Nan, if I can just ask you, from a competitor point of view, and also from a coach, uh, what is your view of that new system with the points? It's the point now for the Wunsu. I think the, basically for the technical for a Shotokan. So you can see it is now even the, the system kata is changed for the boy. But now Wunsu, you can see it with the five jashi. Sit down on the tatami and uh, they they very uh, very uh, focused by the technique, by the standing, and by the power and by the um, speed. And uh, they, yeah, they, um, how to say, I don't know, but it's uh, for Team Kata, it's very, very important for the together, the fix together with, with power, with the speed. But for the new, new system, how to, um, how to compare and how to, um, uh, to, to say with uh, the technical and uh, athletic, it's very difficult for us. And, and Robert, we are, thank you now, but Robert, we're now moving into the, uh, the Bunkai aspect of the kata, and it's, as, as with the flag system, it's still an equal 50-50 in terms of uh, the performance of the kata. Uh, and the realism of the, the Bunkai is important as well, isn't it? So could you give us uh, your interpretation? Well, there's more than 100 kata on the WKF kata list. Uh, so what can you tell us about the influence of the different styles of karate? Uh, we're going to see both Shotokan kata here, but there are many, many, many different styles. So what is your uh, view on the particularities of those differences? Um, you see, uh, as you said, that we have uh, over 100 katas on the list, and um, we have to concern the style performance and even Ryuha performance, that means that groups of the of the style. So um, uh, the rules say that slight variation is um, is uh, okay for uh, for uh, judgment for the kata, but uh, uh, slight variation can be um, is up to the per, uh, perception of the judges. For one judge, slight variation is just very small things uh, we can change, but for another, they say, okay, we allowed uh, more changes. So what is happening with the styles is that even uh, right now, uh, competitor from one style use the cutters from another style. Um, the only question is if it's correct according to the kihon of the style. So that's uh, the main difficulty uh, for the judges to get good uh, uh, answer for performance at the technical performance of the uh, of the competitor or team. Um, as we can say, Bunkai, as you, as you said, that is equal to, in uh, in uh, judgment for the uh, kata. Uh, prior show for the public and uh, that means that 50% of the judgment is uh, is uh, judged from the bunkai for the uh, uh, performance of the of the technique and how they do this because as you know the bunkai is just you know to show the techniques uh, in particular situation or combinations uh, thank, thank you Robert the, the other part of this is of course is the judge education program, which is very, very comprehensive. It takes many, many years for people to qualify as uh, kata judges. And, and you run courses. And there are uh, often opportunities for judges to see some of those nuances from the kata styles. And what sort of areas are showcased, focused on when you perform those kata training programs? Yes, so we have a training program for the judges uh, during the World Championships or Continental Championships. And uh, uh, the program is based that we have instructors from different styles. Uh, they, are, they are judges as well. And uh, they are uh, showing the uh, principles of the style. And uh, we are talking about the uh, Ryuha. That means that we are also, uh, there is a mention that uh, differences. 
uh, there are very slight differences in uh, in particular style. So. Uh, what we are talking, we are talking about how we perform techniques, how we uh, perform uh, uh, stances, how we move the transitional movements from one stance to another stance, uh, the focus of the techniques. We are talking about breathing, which is very important. Um, and we mentioned, of course, the kihon, that means that conformance of the kata, that how uh, competitors have to do the kata uh, according to the style, or yuha, in the case of the variations. Well, uh, an awful lot for judges to have to get to grips with. Uh, and Nayan, if I can just now ask you, we just had a little glimpse of that fabulous crowd that we had back in 2012 in Paris Bercy. Thousands of people, 12, 15,000 people. From a competitor's point of view now, how on earth do you overcome the pressure of performing at such a high level on the world stage? Uh, I think for um, the how to the, the shifting position was not easy for me when I was there. But you know, in the um, uh, I think is uh, if uh, you I think not only me, not only me and all athletes have to uh, practice hard work and. Um, uh, how to say is a uh, okay as as an analyst I just need to pay attention to my performance uh, and focus my energy and uh, however as a course I need to pay more attention during this thing at my athlete and champions and my experience and uh, to at least to um, how do you think I uh, you have to pass a hard work and when you that's a period. and uh, I think they they can do they can overcome to the understand when you do during the performance. Thank you, thank you very much indeed for that. Uh, now, if I can come back to you again, Robert. Now, uh, are there any particular uh, moments in kata that stand out in your mind over the vast experience that you've had? Any particular? Um, moments where you were so impressed with the performance and clearly we've had two fantastic performances here. Anything that stand out specifically to you? Uh, yes, of course. Uh, exactly this performance we watch right now. Uh, there's no uh, doubt that the World Championships in Paris and Bercy Hall with public like this was something special. The perfect organization, the perfect standard of the of the competitors, uh, good standard of refereeing. Uh, so everything works very well, and we did really really good job to show that the World Karate Federation is producing very good competitions in karate, uh, in karate general. And um, if I am thinking about this, I've been just watching. I've not don't been doing the job as a judge in this match, but I am just standing there. In the background, and I watched this match. It was a fantastic uh, to be there and to experience such things. Uh, this is a lifetime experience, and uh, I used today the performance of those uh, two teams, the top teams in the world, as um, as an example for the seminars uh, I am providing for the, the judges. Well, just to add to that, Robert, one of the things that uh, I think all judges will would love is to be one day. Uh, on that tatami, making an assessment for either kata or kumite. So how on earth do you prepare for such an important bout as a referee or judge? Um, in my uh, situation, I am a uh, little bit uh, in front of maybe uh, other judges because karate is uh, life for me. I work in karate uh, full time in the National Federation. I do uh, training in my club. Uh, in the evenings, and I, I am participating in a competition as a, as a jazz or referee. So uh, I use a lot of time for uh, karate in general. But uh, uh, we are to, if we are talking about preparation for the championships like this or uh, Olympics like we are had in uh, uh, um, Argentina for youth Olympics, um, I use time to uh, analyze the kata. I use time to read the books about the styles, about the uh, performance, about movements, about the philosophy of the kata. 
So this gives me a possibility to have uh, some uh, idea what is correct or what maybe is not correct. But of course, the most important thing that we judge the kata according to the rules we have. And this is the main thing we uh, teach our judges, to be prepared to use rule book. And when we do this, then we have no problems with the judgment. Uh, the, the main task is to be very well prepared uh, psychologically to, for, for the competitions like this. Because if somebody stay in the middle of the tatami and you have this public around you, uh, uh, it's, believe me, it's a little bit it's taking you know, the, some strength of you. <laughs> <laughs> very much so. So the message is very, very clear. Study, study, study. Uh, and get prepared properly. So Nan, can I just ask you now, uh, you've been a uh, competitor for your national federation but as both an individual and world champion, also as part of a team. So what kata, particularly, what is your favorite kata as a team competitor and why? Uh, yes, it's the it's least kata in the, of the rule with many a team kata. And now I think the 100s is more over, maybe we become more over. And my favorite kata is Tianjin. So many times I teaching and I um, change before in the European and in the world also I answer the same time, the same kata is my Xianqin because you know this is basic kata that helped me for uh, for, uh, for improve my basic skill and pave the way for more the difficult techniques and more more up more um, we put up me for more for, for do the more High level, high level technique like power and like speeder. Mm. You can see mm. because I don't know. Um, have you ever trained in CNC? But I really love CNC. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, I, in fact, I chose CNC as one of the kata I had to perform when I did a kata exam for the World Federation. Mm. But now CNC is the, the, for the, uh, the new rules. Yeah. <laughs> The exactly, new rule yes. is not not uh, much, uh, uh, not much player is using the CNC anymore, but I think so because they they no. want to try to with a long kata and very very um, uh, beautiful performance kata. So I think CNC will be yes, yeah. yes will be some delay yeah. of the list. I don't know, <laughs> but I hope in in the list. Absolutely. Well, we've just seen uh, the conclusion of the kata. We'll get a chance to have a look at some of the replays in a moment of that. Japan took a fantastic win. We saw, Robert, didn't we? Five flags go up for Japan. But it wasn't an easy five. It was a very, very good performance in of Gankaku from Italy, wasn't it? Indeed. So under the point system, it would have been very tight. But under the flag system, it gives you the impression it was a 5-0 score. <laughs> But just before we uh, come to the end of the program, I must ask you, uh, Robert, about the Olympics next year. Uh, Karate will have the biggest showcase of its history at the Olympics in Tokyo. And what are your, in your opinion, what are the main challenges that uh, referees will be officiating there? What are the main challenges that they are facing? Uh, well, um, I don't think so that we have a challenge that we um, uh, we will get any challenge uh, when we come over to Tokyo. We have already experience from the Youth Olympics. We have already experience from the World Games, uh, Continental Games, and the World Championships, Continental Championships. So we are experienced uh, to do a job like this. But uh, what is special right now because of the uh, Corona uh, pandemic that we don't have uh, live competitions. And the main challenge I believe right now we have for the referee commission to prepare plan B for preparation for the, those who will be choose, those referees who will be chosen mm -hmm. for, uh, for Tokyo. So this is the, 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 the main challenge right now. Um, so how, how to prepare the judges and referees for the task uh, uh, in Tokyo. But uh, what is special the, about the Tokyo, uh, for sure that WKF do everything to prepare both competitors, coaches and judges and of course organizers to do the best job. And uh, I, I believe that this is going to be uh, something special for all of us uh, to experience uh, Tokyo. Doesn't matter if somebody will be there and doesn't matter if we are going to do that with the public or without public. For us, the most important thing is to show that we are doing the very high standard of sport.
the Olympic Committee will say, yes, this is a sport we want to have forever. Couldn't agree more and uh, well said and, and, and exceptionally well put. Uh, it's going to be wonderful. And now can I just give you the last word and you're obviously going to be looking forward to the Olympics. Um, what will it mean to you and your athletes? Yes, now I'm, I'm, I'm standing uh, in position by the coach, but uh, you know, when I, when I was in a, when I was athlete, I really want to one time, and I think only one time can enjoy the Olympic Games because you know it's Olympic game, not only karate, but we can share and we can meet many friends from another sport. And now the karate in the uh, an outstanding event, and we wait. We could wait thing by karate actually around the world. So we are very, really power proud of our karate debut of uh, as an official subject in Olympics. So I'm really happy and I hope my athletes can have a chance to go to Olympic next year. And what a wonderful uh, moment that would be for all athletes, all officials. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much, both of you, for your time and your expertise in sharing uh, those memories and those thoughts. Uh, we come to the end of the program. Thank you, Robert Hamara. Thank you, Nan and Gwen, for your time. And until next time, everyone, thank you and bye-bye.